Hello everyone. Welcome to our video series of interview questions. In this video, I will cover two important topics for Verilog. First is event regions in Verilog and second, what is race condition in Verilog. So let's start with event regions in Verilog. So what are event regions uh, exactly? So in Verilog, there are different types of statements like blocking assignments, non-blocking assignments, continuous assignment, dollar display, dollar monitor. And suppose if all of them are sub scheduled to execute at one simulation time, consider they are all supposed to execute at time zero nanosecond, then who will decide the order of execution of these statements? Like which statement will get priority over which statement? So for that, IEEE standard has divided these statements into four event regions. And based on the event regions they lie, their order of execution will be decided on that. So all these event regions are triggered at current time slot. So before moving further, I would like to give a brief about these terms used previous time slot, next time slot and current time slot. So if I see this piece of code, so using first using time scale directive, I have first defined the time unit and time precision for this module test. So what is time unit? Time unit is the measurement of delays and simulation time. So if I tell in simple terms, when you give hash one delay, the unit of that delay is decided by this time unit. So in this code, when I have mentioned hash one, it will be considered as 10 nanosecond. If I mention hash two, then it will it may be considered as 20 nanosecond. And the next is we mentioned the time precision. Time precision basically specifies how delay values are rounded before being used in the simulation. So it basically tells the smallest step which a simulation can have for that module. So uh, hence telling the one time step for a simulation. So in our case, the one time step for this module test is one nanosecond. Inside this module test, we have an initial begin statement and we know that initial uh, executes the statements at time zero. And all these statements inside begin end are executed. Our statement A1 equals to one will be executed at time zero. And when it is as this assignment is completed, then uh, it will move to the next statement that is A2 equals to two. So if I consider uh, this statement A1 so with, ref with reference to this statement, our current time slot is zero nanosecond. In this code, we have only two statements which are being executed at time zero. There might be several other statements also, different types of non-blocking, dollar display, dollar monitor, and the execution order of those statements will be defined by these event regions. So at a current simulation time, so consider for this example, at zero nanosecond, these four event regions can be triggered and they all are supposed to be completed within one time step. For this example, they are all to be supposed to be completed within one nanosecond. Now in the, so this is our current time slot zero nanosecond. Now, if I move to the next statement, hash one A3 equals to two. So since our time unit is 10, this statement will be executed at 10 nanosecond. So with reference to A1, our current time slot is zero nanosecond and our next time slot is 10 nanosecond. So are all these active uh, or uh, all these event regions will be executed first at current time slot. And whenever the next uh, statement arises at whatever simulation time. So in our case, the next statement is executing at 10 nanosecond. So at next time slot, all these event regions will again be uh, triggered. So now moving back to the definition of these event regions, what all statements are covered in this event regions. So first we have programming statements. So programming statements like for loop, if condition and all those things are covered in active event regions. So uh, the gist here is whenever these statements will come, the they will be given priority for execution. The next uh, uh, its type of a statement we have is 
the evaluation and updation of blocking assignments also happen in this active event region and the third is evaluation of rhs of non blocking assignment non blocking assignments are divided into two steps first is the rhs of the non blocking assignments are evaluated and then the lhs is updated so here in active event region only the evaluation of the rhs is done now the other statements we have in active event region is dollar display final blocking continuous assignment the second event region we have is inactive event region one important point here to note is inactive event region won't be processed until all the events in active regions are empty so let's understand this is an example so here uh, what all come first what all comes under inactive event region has zero delayed events are uh, covered in under inactive event regions if i see one example inside this statement initial begin end i have two statement first is a has zero delayed event and second is a, a blocking assignment we know that blocking assignment comes under active event region and has zero delay comes under inactive event so now since active event regions are supposed to execute first so here despite being this delayed event despite being this statement return first assignment of a2 will occur first because this lies in active event region and when all the active event regions are done then the simulator will move to the inactive event region which is this that is then a1 equals to 1 will be assigned so if we can see that that hash zero delay assignments basically schedules one of the assignment to take place slightly later in the same simulation time step now the third region we have is non blocking assignment update event region this also will not be processed until all the inactive and active event regions are uh, completely done so the updation of lhs of non blocking assignment comes under this this region as i told earlier also that block non blocking assignments are divided into two steps first the rhs of the uh, non blocking assignment is evaluated first and then the updation of lhs happens so the evaluation of rhs happens in active event region and the updation of this lhs will happen in nba update event region so if i take this example here here the things marked with black comes under active event region and the things marked with orange comes under nb update region so what will be the order here so first our rhs 1 is evaluated and then a2 is assigned with 2 and when now active event region is completely empty now we can move to our next region that is nb update re event region so after this after a2 is assigned then only a1 will be assigned with 1 next we have postponed event region so dollar strobe and dollar monitor display functions comes under this so basically dollar strobe and dollar monitor shows the updated values of all variables at the end of a simulation time step the reason being is that they lie in postponed event re event region which occurs at the end of a simulation time step so if i see this example here so here similar to the uh, previous example first our rhs one value is evaluated then our a is assigned with value 2 and then since dollar strobe lies in postponed event region but we still have one active event region to to still be finished so before dollar strobe dollar display will be executed and since up till now the latest value of a is 2 so it will display value 2 and when uh, now active event region is completely empty now the simulator can move to nba region and in nba region now it will again update the value of a with 1 and after nba it will now next move to this postponed event region where it will execute this dollar strobe statement and now the latest value of a is 1 so dollar strobe will print 1 so 
in initial beginning it might seem that these all are uh, executing sequentially but the order of their sequence will depend on in which event region they lie now one important point here to note is that these initial three regions are iterative means that inactive event region can trigger some statements which allow which can require return to the active region again similarly nb update event region can also trigger some uh, event which can which will require return to the active event event region again so basically these three regions are iterative allowing them to schedule events that require return to the active region and one more important point that is inactive uh, region will not be processed until active region is empty which i explained using this example also and one important point here to note is that we saw that that evaluation and updation of blocking assignments happen in active event region immediately so this immediate update of blocking region basically behaves like combinational logic but with zero delay similarly we see that non blocking assignments are updated in two step this two step update of blocking region behaves like clock to queue propagation of sequential logic but with zero delay so this is one of the main reason why we use blocking assignments in combinational logic and uh, non blocking assignments in sequential logic now next let's see one complete example for all these event regions so as i told first all the active event regions will be done so the the first statement uh, is blocking assignment and we know that it comes under active event region so these will be executed so x y z will be assigned with 10 20 30 now dollar display also comes under active event region so it will display the values of these variables x y z so it will display 10 20 and 30 now we know that nba update regions comes after active event regions so it won't be executed for now only the rhs of these non blocking assignments will be evaluated that is 40 50 60 60 up till now updation of this xyz has not happened since it comes under nba and we still have some active event regions in queue now the next event region active event region we have in queue is this dollar display statement so this will also print only 10 20 30 because up till now xyz has not been updated with these 40 50 60 value now again it will move to the next assignment where xyz are uh, assigned with 70 80 90 now the next active event region we have is dollar display so it will uh, hold this dollar stroke statement first it will execute dollar display Z is 70, 80, and 90. Now it will move to our NB update event region, where it will assign X, Y, Z to 40, 50, and 60. So the latest value of X, Y, Z at the end of the time simulation step is 40, 50, 60. And now dollar stroke, which comes under postponed event region, will be executed. And since now the latest value of X, Y, Z is 40 50 60 40 50 60 will be printed with dollar stroke so now one important point here to note is we see that even though uh, we write dollar display after uh, nb assignment but dollar display was only showing the values of uh, the the assignments done through blocking blocking assignment so to display the values uh, which are updated by non blocking assignment we should use dollar display since it will always be executed after nb uh, after non blocking assignments are updated so, uh, so that's why we have seen that we generally use dollar display to display values which have been assigned through blocking assignment and we generally use dollar display to display values which have been assigned using non blocking assignments so this is all about event regions now let's move to our next topic called race condition so what is a race condition in verilog 
So a very log race condition occurs when two or more statements that are scheduled to execute in the same simulation time step would give different results when the order of statement execution is changed. So let's understand more this with an example. So here in this model race condition, uh, we have two always block and both are executing at passage of clock. Assuming that this passage of clock is coming at 0 nanosecond, so we can assume that these both are supposed to be executed at time 0 nanosecond. From a user perspective, it might seem that the execution of these two, uh, these two always blocks will happen parallelly. But in actual scenario, these statements are executed sequentially one instruction at a time without advancing the timestamp. So, as I told in the previous video also, uh, that all the event regions are executed within one time step. So these are these are also supposed to execute within one time step, but they will be executed sequentially. But what will be the sequence that is unknown because they are supposed to execute parallelly. So the sequence is unknown. So uh, there might be a possibility that one simulator might uh, execute this always block first and the other simulator might execute this always block next. And similarly, a other simulator might execute this always block first. So like here we see, we have the dependency of execution of this always block that we want this to execute first so that A1 is updated first, which can be used to update A2. But if some other simulator execute this earlier and this later, then it, would, it won't give the desired result. So this is called as race condition where two concurrent statements are scheduled to execute in the same time step, step but the order execution is unknown. If blocking assignments are not properly ordered, it can lead to a potential race condition. So what is the solution of this? The solution is very simple. We know that, that say the statements between begin and uh, begin and end execute sequentially. So when we want to execute some statement in a particular order, we should always include them in a begin and end statement. So here, now the order of execution is very clear. First assignment of A1 will happen and then only A2 will be assigned, where the value of updated A1 is only used. Now one more thing, what some uh, people use is, they use hash zero hash zero that is hash zero delayed event which i explained in the previous slide which comes under an active event region which basically uh, schedules one of the assignments to take place slightly later in the same simulation time so that will also solve our simulation but that is not a very good practice because adding hash zero delay assignments to Verilog models unnecessarily complicates the analysis of schedule events so it is advised to use only this way to beat the to avoid the race condition so this is all for today's video thank you everyone for more such videos please like share and subscribe